Welcome to the Press Box. I'm Ryan Thorburn, joined by Steve Mims. We're coming to you from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, where number 22 Oregon has just lost to the Cornhuskers 35-32 in kind of a wild game, as we expected it to be close, but I think the Ducks are kicking themselves with a lot of the mistakes they made in this game. They uh, failed on four two-point conversions, had 13 penalties, and a host of other mental errors, and they lose to Nebraska. Big win for Mike Riley, tough loss for Mark Helfrich. Steve, uh, what are some of the storylines that you're going to take away from this one? Well, I think you mentioned the two-point conversions. You know, Oregon, it, it's worked to their advantage quite a bit in the, in, the, in the past, but this is kind of one where it came down to both teams scored the same amount of touchdowns. Oregon went for two. It didn't work out for them this time around. Um, and then the injuries. I mean, Royce Freeman goes out in the first quarter. We don't know when he's coming back. Gary Campbell said it's not real serious. Others seem to indicate maybe it was a little bit more. Devin Allen looked like he was hurt pretty bad. Tyrell uh, Crosby was on a boot. And that's three pretty big parts of the offense right there. This defense, as a work in progress, is going to need that offense to be able to keep up as they have in the past. And with those three out, that may, as we go down the way, become the storyline coming out of this game. I guess what's impressive or what you can take from this if you're an Oregon fan is despite losing Crosby, the starting left tackle, Royce Freeman, you know, a Heisman candidate if Oregon were, you know, in the chase this year, great running back, uh, they still ran for 336 yards. Uh, they had a 97-yard drive to take the lead late. Uh, Nebraska comes back and scored. They have another drive going, uh, shoot themselves in the foot with, with a holding call and ultimately Prue Cop. Uh, is tackled for uh, the final uh, play and they can't get it done but Oregon's offense still performed relatively well despite these injuries. Yeah we saw Prukop run a little bit more today without Royce. Ken Ivan Wall had I think 41 and 46 yard runs and he's shown that before he's got kind of a breakaway he doesn't necessarily look like your breakaway back but he is and then Tony Brooks James who looks like your breakaway back became their short yardage guy scored a couple of short ones and, and like I say with Prukop uh, you know, overthrew Carrington again, missed Nelson on one. There's been a couple of, of throws I'm sure he wants back, but and then ran it. And then they mentioned that last play, just they were supposed to throw it. He went back, tried to step up a little bit, pressure got to him, and, and they couldn't even get rid of the ball to give him a chance to continue the game. Defensively, Brady Hoke's walking a fine line, not just with injuries, but trying to be really aggressive, more ing aggressive than last year's group but yet you're called for four I think four, four pass, pass interference. interference calls you know hoax likes challenging the receivers but maybe the hand placement isn't there and then fourth and nine they have Nebraska in a fourth and nine after Oregon had taken the lead uh, Tommy Armstrong is able to convert that and then run for a 34 yard touchdown uh, the defense improved but still like the team as a whole just can't quite finish yeah, and we saw five first-time starters in there. A.J. Hoskins, as we expected, didn't play after getting hurt. The confusing ones, Troy died. The Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week two weeks ago didn't play on defense, played on special teams. No explanation, so that's just sort of a mystery as to why he didn't. We saw a true freshman, Brendan Schooler, starting at safety. Uh, another freshman, Drayton Carlberg, starts on the line. So he's moving some things around. You mentioned the Tommy Armstrong run at the end. He said they were going to have a spy out there for him. He thought they stopped him a few times, but you're right, the 34-yarder at the end was, was the one, and really, there was a four Fourth and nine that they just could have batted it down. Oregon probably can just run out the clock. So or Oregon kind of with some puzzling decisions, still trying to solve their own puzzle about, you know, who to, the best players are to put on the field for defense, how to make up for some of these injuries. And now they go home for a, a, what's going to be a pretty interesting game against Colorado, a team that played well at Michigan, a team desperate to have a winning season. It'll be, uh, I guess, a test to see how this team bounces back from this disappointment. Yeah, and like you say, do they have Royce Freeman? I and mean, we saw the other guys can do it, but you certainly don't want to have to count on that. I mean, you need Royce as kind of your bellwether, 30-carry guy. They've talked about wanting that 25 carries. We haven't seen Brooks, James, Benoit, or Griffin. I don't think any of us had more than 14 carries in a game. So you really kind of mix in matches instead of having your one main guy. All right, well, that's going to do it from the heartland. We'll see you back in Eugene next week. Thanks for tuning in.